어떤 승부가 만들어졌을 때 풀면 되겠죠. 그렇죠. 2018년도 KT 로스터도 기대해 주셨으면. 월드컵을 보는 거를 보기만 했었잖아요. 월드컵에 세 번째로 올라갑니다. 다른 높은 자리에서 진짜 제대로 통쾌하게 한번 복수한 것 같아요. 이대로 무너지는 거 아닌가 뭐 이런 얘기까지 나왔었는데 Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that was a whirlwind of a game, but unsurprisingly, Linda Rong top in the charts there as far as the damage is concerned. Bang, after absolutely destroying in game one, barely really got anything done on the Tristana here in game number two. But certainly not Bang is the person we talk about oh, no, here. No. He was, was non-factor. There was nothing the bot lanes could do to salvage or help this particular situation because the top lane was on fire. In a good way for the side of Rocks, and in a terrible way for the side of SKT. Free food. So many free kills passed over the side of Rocks. Very good synergy between Song Wan and Linderang. And that is why your MVP will be Linderang, because hey, what a game. Yeah, not, uh, not too shocking at all that he got that 69% kill participation to round that out. Had just the one death they were able to pick up in the bottom side of the map that Bang got. But uh, otherwise, I mean, it was just a clinic put on here. Uh, by the Rock Tigers members in that top lane, just constantly shutting down Antara time and time again. And SKT will feel like a game of inches. Zack would get there, but get there late, unfortunately, because Songwon and Lindor just kept running in at full speed, not respecting the gangplank at all. And gangplank died and died and died, and there's no counterplay to what he was dealing with after the start that he was given the enemy top laner, and then Lindor just walked in and. That's what a gold lead looks like. Looks like a lot of pain for the gameplay. Literally no counterplay. And then this was the, uh, the heartbreak moment. After everything, someone takes the Baron. Linderong gets a quadra kill. And uh, goodbye, SK Telecom T1. Yeah, that was the end of it. But, uh, I mean, rough times here for SKT. Desperate times. Papa Smithy can call for desperate measures. I mean, that desperate measure has to be back. a thaw, right? It has to be a change in the top lane you'd imagine. I, you know, after the Tara got crushed several times like that, I would fully expect that they bring out Thal, even though... I know he's only been know, with the team a, like very, three weeks now. Exactly, you know, he's such a new player. And we do uh, have okay. a substitute. Well, we hear the music coming through, so more than likely going to be Thal coming through. Let's see what we got. Player change. KT, it's going to be blank out. But they don't, they don't have Pina. I don't think Blossom's going to play. That would be a bit shocking. Uh... What? What? I mean, Wolf's been off-rolling on jungle for a long time. There was some what? jungle in his solo queue account, but... Uh, all right, I see Bang, but that's not Wolf next to him. Wolf's over there. Wolf is jungling for game three of this series. What in the hell is this? Okay. Everyone's been wondering, where's Wolf? Turns we, out. We found him. Yeah, we got him. He's in the jungle seat. Did someone tell him he's not in the support seat? I don't know. But, uh, Fox having a bit of a laugh over this, I guess. This is absolutely bizarre. We knew that Blossom, because he was new to competitive, was unlikely to play. But Achilles, this insane risk taken by SK Telecom T1. Again, he's off-road, famously on jungle for a long time. He can play the Jarvan. There was Jarvan, Sejuani, and Kha'Zix in his recent match history. But this is something crazy by SKT on the first day of the season. Wolf, don't let your eyes deceive you. Wolf is jungling, and in his 534th professional game, it's his first game away from support. This is this is some WWE weird stuff we got going on here. No chair shots just yet. No just tables so, being thrown just yet. Just randomly pops out. The wolf jungle RKO out of nowhere. <laughs> I, this is 
this is some weird shit, Papa. I mean, I, you know, you don't band's need... fine, whatever, but I'm just... Something's in the air here in the stadium at Sangam Esports Arena. The E-Stadium is in kind of a shock. The SKT fans, when they put two and two together, are also very, very shocked by this display. And looking at the bands now, trying to avoid the fact. I don't want it to linger on seeing Wolf's name between Untara and Faker. We have some bands coming through. Cogmore very expected. Let's see if we start opting into 80 carry bands on the side of Rocks. Tigers, though, we usually do see Ezreal, Cogmore, and Callista accounted for. And so far, only one out of those three. Well, Zoe, yet again, going to be denied from us, Vladimir, to follow up. Do we just have the trade-off again? Nope. Kalista on the blue side will be forced out by SK2. Ah, but then they'll get Sejuani, which Wolf has been playing in solo queue, like I mentioned. So it's Ezreal or Sejuani. Aha! It's still a trade. You know, you still feel good if you're able to pick up one of those. Sejuani has been permabanned so far in LCK Spring 2018. You can see Sangyu on the screen, still kind of wondering what's going on. Well, it's going to be the Ezreal band away. So yeah, Sejuani is going to be picked here, 100%. Yeah. So, there we go. Do not adjust your monitor. It will be Wolf piloting Jungle Sejuani in game three, day two of LCK Spring 2018. We started with an hour pause, 11.45, and we find out that Wolf's jungle champ in game six of the night is Sejuani. Things that were unexpected today, times a million on that comment. It's, you know, there's a pretty long list that's building up here today. Azir. Might be coming through. There we go. Will be the lock up here for Lava yet again. Understandable. Good performance from him. It was just clean in the last game. Obviously, when he tried to 1v1 Faker, that wasn't the best. But, I mean, he knew his role earlier. Trying to do that in any context is usually a pretty bad idea. Look, he did his role. He didn't have much to do. <laughs> Top lane kind of did the heavy lifting. But they'll take the Azir. But Tom Kench is probably the other big prize available in this scenario. Another re reach for Orn. Again, I'm not a huge fan of this. Um, I really like Orin as a champion, but just in how the Korean meta has played out, the on priority hasn't necessarily worked, and Tom Kench was up. So, surprising to see it not elected for, I guess, Bard. So, I guess uh, Braum will be selected here by SKT like just what? to answer the Orin. Bard, wasn't it? I, I think you just CNM. take, I think you have to take Braum just to trivialize the Orin almost completely. Baker's having a bit of fun now. Please. Please, it would just be the icing on the cake. I mean, mid lane, uh, Xin Zhao. Pre-6 has a very good time. An all-inning, but will it really happen? The Master Yi happens, so we're never sure. Go ahead. Let's make my... God, dang it. <laughs> all right. Really? I was gonna say, You're make like, my oh, day, Faker. I'm so unfortunate. My day is not made by Jungle Wolf. I, you know, I needed the Xin Zhao mid also. All right, I'm getting greedy, okay? Take that tiara off. No more spoiling you. It would have been great. It's still great. It's still awesome. Going to be a rise coming through for Faker. Locking in the Jarvan. It's going very conventional for the Rocks Tigers. No sign of bot lanes from either side, so we could start stacking bands here and uh, get us some interesting AD carries. We've seen Vayne earlier today in a losing effort. Did not go so well. Devs couldn't make it work. Turns out QSS is a, a pretty good thing to purchase. But Braum's going to be banned away. You already mentioned, you know, SKT potentially picking that up, but not going to get the chance. I mean, Braum says Juani, the duo that Samsung Galaxy showed after Rift Rivals last year, and also just Braum putting up his shield and ruining the uh, Braum, or an ultimate is the, the big interaction. So Windwall and the Braum Unbreakable, the two big abilities to just kind of trivialize that. Call the Forge God. Gangplank band. Okay, so SKT thinking maybe it might be a support Orn. Taking that one off the board. Tom Kench will come through as well, so support focus here for the Rocks Tigers. Trying to limit the pool. Something like uh, you know, an Alistar is still on the table. We saw that banned away by Rocks in the last game, but that could be picked up. Hard to tell if they're junk bans or if they're actually, we think Orin's going to be support bans from SKT. Wait and see. Won't even necessarily be confirmed by whatever's locked in from Rox. Looking for some bot lane and power. And uh, Maris is another one that's been targeted and also picked today. So certainly a strong pick here, even if it's not a Sangyun special like some of the other ones. 
see that one locked in. Not too shocking given how much of the pool has been taken away here. Yes, the Xin Zhao ADC is <laughs> exactly what I want to see. Seems like Shiver is going to be the call for an initiation comp. It's one they've been showing the most. Bit of Cloud Templar trolling, and then it seems like the Siva will be the lock in. Imagine if he accidentally locked the Illumo. I mean, we saw double team in a week, so anything's possible. That's what I'm saying. Us. It would be great. They have to play that. I mean, how do you, what do you even rotate at that point? I'm just shaking my head. I don't even want to think about it. There's been so many unlikely occurrences today that I need to turn the straight and narrow, just look at the screen, focus on what is happening. Right, Silver Alistair, Alistair, happy duo, and it seems like the read by SKT wasn't bad at all, because they are considering the orange support. When you see Alistair, you're not really worried about your lane phase as a tank support, so could just be taking Jason to Nara on the top side. Smashing and Tara worked in the previous game, so flexing the Orn is going to be the way forward for the Rocks Tigers. They're going to try and take Jace into Nar. Okay. A bit more of a carry fight in the top side to try and just kind of survive the laning phase with the Orn, who has good gank assist at six. Previous to that, it's kind of tanky. Interesting stuff, so we consider what happens here. Rocks still do have tankiness. Jarvan and also the Orn will provide that good initiation coming through on the side of Rocks as well. And then for SKT, pretty prototypical drop. A lot of power, the ability to play side lanes. This, to me, again, is the 2018 patch special. You can have a rise to play semi-globals. You have Silver Alistair, which is a bit different, but still can provide a lot. Got wait and see the if jungle. It, gonna wait and see if it's Unsealed Spellbook, but uh, the screen grab's coming in a second. Could be this one, but I think the jungle matchup full screen AR of a wolf being in that position is the one you're gonna remember. NA is gonna wake up soon to well, it's just a crazy thing. People are going to look at the post-match side and be like, oh, they, they put the wrong name in there. That's weird. But the top lane is pretty normal. Jace is there after Orn was vexed up. This happened to Gilius on this day here. We do have Wolf in the jungle as Sejuani. 17th of January, 2018. Wolf branched away from his support play and dove into the jungle. I feel like this Truly is going to go really, really well or really, really It's well. Yeah, it's either going to be like, holy crap, I can't believe that Wolf is this good at the jungle, or it's going to be, Jesus Christ, they never need to, they have to never do that again. We'll find out which it is. Game three, last game of the day here, guys. Just about midnight as we dive into this one. So let's see who's going to come out on top. SKT or Rock Tigers. And in full voice for both teams as we all try and get our bearings for what is an insane match day already. Sixth game of the night, one hour pause to start off the KT versus Afrika series where Afrika recorded their first victory yep. since the start of 2017 over KT Rolster. And now we get a treat we didn't even know we could even possibly want. You can't know you wanted it until you got it. Yep, and you until got we were presented Wolf with it. Jungle. On Sejuani, he's been permabanned so far in the LCK. That's another notable. We can't read that sign. Maybe Joel will do a translation for us. I'm going to guess that they made a sign about Wolf in the jungle. Oh, look at you reading cameras. Good shot. Good shot. Wolf, start on the I've top been side. I'm my career. He's kind of considering his options here. Hard Alicia obviously going to be on the bot side. And it's going to be a late invade from Rock's Tiger, spotted out by Untara. Blue buff takeaway here, however, for Lindrong and Song Wan. Just going to decrease the health total, but not going to be a serious commitment there from the Nar, who can just harass Jace on the way back to lane. Well, Boomerang not really going to connect. Pretty good matchup for Jace. Understandably, given they had the counter pick after flexing the Orn. Wolf's making his way over to this side. We'll get spotted out by that ward. He's level two, and Nara does have first rotation. So it's like, if you waste a lot of time on Gromp, I'm just going to have my top laner come he's and get a running, kill. He's just running at Songwon still. Wolf can't seem to make up his mind. We'll go back over to the Gromp. We're going to see some genius tier pathing. I, <laughs> you know, I'm ready to be... Uh, Amazed. 
meantime, Simmer, you know, not one of the uh, not one of the more common ones as we see that coming through here. Yeah, we saw one Sivir with unsealed spellbook yesterday. Prey was running that for King Zone and teleporting into lane, push, push, push style. You understand it against Ezreal, because Ezreal, of course, one weakness he has in the duo lane is the inability to push. But uh, against Varus seems less likely to be a god tier choice. But the ability to teleport does give flexibility and map movements, which SKT have always been the best at in basically every iteration. So there's a lot going on as Lava. Aker's playing with fire here. Yeah, he really is. And I mean, he's going to miss out on those minions there, including the cannon. Lava, do you want to go for it? No. He should have. Would have been great, but just going to be the swap out there on the summoner spells for Faker coming back in. With he's the feeling it, by the way. Wolf's here for a gank. He's still down to about half HP. Lava's here. Sungwon as well. Forces the flash away. Wolf low on mana. Up Wolf wants wall. this. Yeah, he's looking for Lava, but now he's just isolated himself. Red buff to slow him up, and Wolf. Oh dear. He's just going to be giving up that first blood. He wandering his way up from the bottom lane, just taking away that first blood. You can't take the decisiveness out of Wolf, but in that case, the damage calculation, predictably on a player, on an off roll, wasn't there. Can do a lot of early burst damage, as Sejuani. Many people have felt it, but giving up the first blood here, pretty awkward. Does mean that Key enters lane with red buff. It's not a blue, but does mean that he can shake off poke better than any, and not a great look as a start for SKT. Really not. Everybody kind of getting pushed in here. CS leads for everybody on the side of the Rock Tigers overall. I mean, Wolf, uh, a perfect flash to follow. But oh, for sure. He knew exactly no what he wanted to do, but no mana. Like, yeah, the damage calculation wasn't there. The mana wasn't there. He'd already used his flash, and they had push priority in both sides. So Keyside, thank you very much. Goodbye, Wolf. Back to the drawing board for the Sejuani jungle. All right, well, a bit of an awkward start, but uh, it's not over yet. <laughs> you know, plenty of time to swing their way back into this one. It's not Fleet Footwork on the Sejuani. That's been a really big popular pick in solo queue is Fleet Footwork. Extra attack speed early and movement speed to guarantee the four proc on the E. And also some options in the precision tree do work out really well for Sejuani. Aftershock isn't that common a choice, even though, you know, on first glance, you looked at the runes and you thought, yeah, absolutely going into the Resolve Tree and Aftershock as a great option, as Domination second, just for the Zombie Ward, of course. Gara just gonna get the wall up there. Doesn't have that level six. Also the stuff into the wall could have proved fatal there for Linderong. Just trying to trade even. The Wolf's in a ward. Again, finding Song Wan here. Gonna get the stun up, just get it with the Flag and Dragon. Does happen, so J4 just gonna be safe to exit. It's a funny old game, League of Legends. I've done it a couple of times today. This context, though, is different. Yes, it is. Uh, losing out on a bit of that CS there up top, so I'm going to be behind by a little bit. And now Key going in on the bang. It's a knock up with the charge. Effort trying to trade a little bit back. There's the stun up and bang firing away with the ricochets, but overall, still going to be pretty dang healthy from the side of the Rocks Tigers. And for the side of SKT, I think it's pretty much going to be. As long as top lane doesn't have, you know, the on-fire nature that it did in the previous game, I've got to say those team fights look pretty mighty, even if they were in vain. And Faker's outplays also pretty insane. Same matchup for Faker on the rise. Good matchup into the Azir. So, given the top lane's a lot more equal, Wolf, or Wolf, Wolf or not, they do have great team fight options as the game goes on. I have faith in Wolf throwing that ultimate and landing it, and then the rest of SKT blowing somebody up. So. Team fight phase will be just fine for him. It's just about getting there and how this, you know, pathing and the ganks are going to continue here for Wolf. Wolf being behind means the top lane is isolated. So pretty happy times for Jace. Small CS lead, but he's building the items he wants and now has to build into defensive stats. So Jace in the supremacy in the top side. Zero doing well after forcing Faker out of lane, but no CS advantage, and they're returning to blue buff. So we talked in game one about bullying effort, you know, bullying Wolf in a new role. Certainly not a rookie by any means, but a rookie to the jungle at the highest level. So good to see Song Wan continuing his good play in the previous game by finding a place and attacking it. But this game, it is Wolf. Who would have thought? And no one pre-match. Game one, it was effort. Then Untara, now 
Seems like Wolf is uh, gonna be the next big focus here. Antara taking quite a bit of damage from that Shock Blast. And Songwon is waiting on the other side here, but Antara does have that defensive ward in the brush. Not a spot until now, though. Now. Yeah, Blast Cone bringing him in as they go for the dive. Antara looking for the transformation. TP coming through as well. Baker gonna arrive. Realm Warp coming through. They want this. Looks like they might be able to find it. Baker's going in for Linderong. As Antara, he's got the handle there on Songwon. A little bit more damage. It's Wolf. Finish him off, and the auto Not attack will get him. Wolf is just going to take a turret shot. Songwon back out, and two Lin kills. Songwon and Linderong giveth. Songwon and Linderong taketh away in this particular scenario. Two kind of calming kills inside of SKT. A bit of experience for Wolf as he jumped over. I believe he was in XP range there, but that was all he was going to get. Intriguing stuff and important for SKT. You know, no matter how this game goes, if SKT wins, can we please vote Wolf into MVP? Because I would love to hear his interview. I don't think our votes are going to be the deciders there because uh, the autofill oh, in isn't... LCK situation is enough to get any popular vote. This is not my plea to you. This is my plea to anybody who might hear me that has some influence over that. And Wolf is looking for more. He's actually sticking around. That's some veteran jungler sense, trying to continue to pile on to the good matchup of Jace by trying to get the second kill. A little bit of damage there coming through. Still just trying to take away the Krug, but it seems like, yeah, it's just going to be the Krug picking that one up since they can the extended leash. A little bit coming through here. Now sit back, bang. Is that stopwatch? alive charge for it gets the knock up quite a bit of damage exchanged there as he and song you come out on top of that virus orange does feel like kind of a varus brom kind of situation with how much pick cc they have i didn't see when the spell shield was used may have been used earlier it's down now she going through trying to clear out the minions but lava and song want to wrap it around from behind effort and bang nice we'll defensive ward out. yeah they have that ward there and a really creative spot as well yeah, not, definitely not a you know a normal check spot, just over the wall. Uh, spotting the blast yeah, cone, the blast I guess, cone, yeah. is, is what you're taking away from that. Baker will kind of walk in the area, but largely be training towards mid lane. Rox's dive undone by a smart defensive ward there. Couldn't spot if it was bang or effort, but as a duo, they do spot out. Creative approach Rox is taking. They certainly stopped the worst from happening. SKT still keeping things very tight knit, just you know, 200 gold or so behind at the moment. Dragon not yet coming to tension. Ten and a half minutes in, Mountain Drake still just going to be chilling out. A lot of vision control on the top side means that Nara can take chances against Jace. You don't want to, as Lava and Songwan meet their opposing duo of Wolf and Faker. But double control ward for Nara against Jace is very unlikely to happen, so it's more control than you'd expect around a losing lane matchup, so pretty good time for Untara, all things considered. That's why his CS is very uh, competitive against Jace. We're just making sure that Bang can back without a problem. Comes straight back in with the unsealed spellbook, changing his heal into a teleport. Probably going to be heal again later. But after that recall, we see another ward coming down just to spot Wolf. Lane gank's very possible with the Sejuani, so while Linderung's not Confident enough to EQ in anymore after the last double kill they passed over to SKT. They are still keeping tabs on the Sejuani very well. Just trying to drag him as much as possible. You can see Antara, things have stabilized there up top. Got that CS advantage coming through. Very slight one at that, plus the kill there for himself. So going to be in a much better spot compared to the last game. Should be worth noting that the Laning phase extending bot lane suits Sung Yoon really, really well as that's E WQ'd here. Nice spell shield there. That's gonna be the lockdown there on a Sung Yoon as he goes low. Wolf is that just trying to keep Bang alive. Call out going through and that with the Poomerang blade going through. Bang is gonna pick up the kill. First one here for the bottom lane. As that goes over onto the Sivir and Tara. Gonna fire back, try to chunk out Linderong as Faker arrives with a Realm Warp. Q in, gets locked down, and he'll fall, and Tara finding yet another kill. Went in two lanes at once. Big pressure move here from SK Telecom T1. In the bot side, Sung Yoon and Rox were choosing fights when they're in a power trough. I meant I was going to mention that putting down a ward onto the enemy golems, or Krug Camp, I should say, 
is fine because you just want to keep farming. You have a recurve bow and a pickaxe. It's still over 2,000 gold till you finished your real first item of the Ginsu Rage Blade. Instead, they tried to fight around it. Lost there. Great roam timing by Faker came in with just the level one ultimate and was able to pick up the kill there. So everything working in unison for the side of Rocks of SK Telecom T1. Four to one. Gold lead still not that significant. Just a thousand gold blossoming there for SKT. Wasn't intended. 13 minutes into this game. Mountain Drake still has not been looked at, nor has that Rift Herald. Let's see what Wolf is going to do next. Right now, just hovering around that top side of the river, but is spotted out as he clears that control ward. And towards the top side, providing coverage for Antara. Very, very important to allow him to walk up and poke. I mean, while, you know, Wolf has been losing out on his blue buff, he's been taking the red buff away from Songwon pretty consistently throughout this game. So that's kind of the exchange they've been going to. And you can see that, you know, sees that it comes up. He goes straight back over to this top side of the map because Antara's got so much presence in the lane. There's nothing really that Linderong could do to try to help take that red buff back over to the side of Rocks. And you just put it together, and in a bad matchup, Untara has way more lane presence than the Jace. And they're going to look for a dive. Yeah, they're going to be going for this one. They get the slow up. They know Linderong the flash is back too up. For, a bit too far forward. And they know flash is back up for Linderong, so they just pull out from that. But they're taking over the what should be the wake side and making it their strong side. Just negating Jace's laning phase, and we've seen enough Jace games to know that if Jace is held down this extensively, his late game power is not what he's picked for. So if Nar can always be a half item ahead, take him in the 1v1, and be a team fight guard as his Nar is wont to do, this is big for SKT. They split the map in the ideal way on the top side. As they down and they go ahead and they start up that Rift Herald as well. Faker hovering nearby, taking the blue buff, can help finish this one off. Or he'll just leave Wolf to his own devices. Seems like that'll be the uh, the way he plays this one out. Wants to go ahead and catch that minion wave in mid. Still been hovering behind Lava as far as the CS is concerned, but not by a whole lot. Ten down at the moment as that Rod of Age is coming through. Starting to stack that up alongside the Tear of the Goddess. With Rome's also coming off successfully. So yes. definitely advantage Faker in the mid lane matchup. Oh yeah, 1 0 2 for him. Dragon being taken. Boomerang to try to finish that one uh -oh. off, and he breaks it away, drops down to 30 HP before the backswing, and bang, just nets it for himself. You know that's the dagger through the heart. Oh, that is, that's the tilter right there. Certainly, it means you get both neutrals, no smite available for someone only now ticking off cooldown. Sometimes you feel like the whole weight of the world is collapsing on you, and that right there was the moment where Rocks thought, okay, things are bad. Here we go, this is gonna be the engagement. On the hunt, coming through from Bang, firing away in onto Song Yun. Faker now arriving, just no hope for the Varus. He just gets destroyed as Faker walks away with the kill. Lava, the rest of the team not able to collapse in time to help save him. Five to one advantage here for SK Telecom as that gold lead keeps growing now up to 3,000. I mean, the communication that must be going on here has been beautiful to watch. It's reminiscent of game one, even though the roster is different, because they've split the map in the absolute optimal way, macro-wise. It's a massive win to be able to have the Jace as a non-factor. Sure, Wolf made one silly overdive, but everything around that is super clean from SKT. Is this just a one-off? Is this a backup strategy? Is it an emergency? Is it a new starting situation? We don't have the influence or the understanding of what the reality of that is, but... It's working a treat right now. Yeah. I mean, the fact of the matter is, Rox might just have to live with losing to Wolf in the jungle the only time that he's pl he'll play it competitively in 2018. <laughs> this could just be it, and it could just be to finish off Rox. Insane. Insane risk. Insane roll of the dice. He certainly wasn't monopolizing his solo queue account with only jungle. He was playing largely support off roll on jungle. Has always played some jungle. I mean, well, famously, wasn't big for solo queue, and especially for playing support in solo queue until his lack of form in summer last season led to more support play. But it seems pre-planned from SKT. I mean, you know, when when we found out about it, one of the first things that ran through my mind was that this was like what SKT did back at the start of 2016, swapping Bengi out and putting Blank in when he had just joined the squad. I'll hold my thought there as Effort gets launched on, but he's just going to go ahead and go. He gets that three-man pulverize as Faker arrives. Oh, Forge God comes through, but it's not really doing a whole lot. Song is going to be coming out of that stopwatch, promptly taken down by Bang with the Boomerang Blade and now Key 
Also gonna follow soon as the double kill going over to the Sivir. Seven to one here for SKT. Absolutely just destroying Rock Tiger. If you want any confirmation that the Drake take was the tilter, it can be the fact that they just all end on the Alistair, who had ultimate up. That's uh, that's never the right call for the yeah. Rocks Tigers. They're uh, might have to pack this one up, Achilles. Yeah. But I was saying, you know, it reminded me of when they swapped Blank in for the first time against the Rocks Tigers, the original Rocks Tigers, and everyone just kind of said, you know, oh, it's because SKT don't think they can win with Bengi in, so they want to put Blank in, and then it's kind of like oh, we have an excuse to lose. Uh, that was my first thought with Wolf coming into the jungle was that it was going to be a similar situation, but uh, it turns out it's actually doing okay. I think it's one of those things where it's SK Telecom. You know, they're a team that's very, very proud. They're a team that thought they were 2-0, but were run over by Rox in game two. And Blank was second to places, but didn't feel like he was slow. Just felt like that's the natural way of yeah. things. When you're a Zac, they put what looks like on the outside a massive dice roll, but we don't know how scrims are going. We don't know how much has been put into this exactly. because outside of, you know, a big miss or over eagerness around the dive onto Azir. I mean, he's not necessarily had to do too much here, but he hasn't done too much wrong either, which again, he's playing his competitive debut as a jungler, 534 games in, in the LCK. And that already is a mini win for Wolf. Not bad at all, just that one death, one kill that they've given over to Rox. That overzealousness from Wolf, and he has not been making that mistake twice here in this game. So, so what so you're saying is he's here. ruining the perfect game. <laughs> you know, he did. Yeah. He did do that. <laughs> Damn it, Wolf. It could have been worse. You could have been perfect gamed by Wolf Jungle. You'll never jungle in this town again. SKT running the map. They had great vision control on the top side before when they needed it. They don't need it right now. It's a nice little flash from Faker. Yeah. The redirection does get the pop up there on the Faker, who's now looking to turn things around. There's an effort in the backside, goes in, gets that pulverized. Takes a little bit of damage, even through the ultimate, but uh, Faker ult. is dishing out quite a bit now. Antara arriving in, gets that killing blow in onto Key, and the rest of Rocks are running scared, but the Emperor's Divide is not going to be enough to save Lava's life. Bang comes in, takes him out, and now he's going to be looking to knock down that tier two turret here in the bottom lane. Use of round walk. Beautiful. Says Wani ult thrown in celebration. Missed everyone. Don't worry, Wolf. No one noticed. So we're going to keep pushing in the bot side. And uh, we talked about the previous game snowballing away for Ox. Exactly the same story, but this time for SKT on blue side. They're going to be 10,000 gold up in almost no time. It's going to hit 8,000 the moment this turret goes down. Dappy 7.4. It's going to do our maths correctly, but. It's going to go forward a little bit before. Oh, maybe, not, maybe they're not going to finish off that uh, mid turret. Yeah, Bang's going to go ahead and peel back, so. A little bit of a delay on that one. But yeah, you know, we'll, we'll give Wolf that ultimate. You get one. Competitive jungle of Wolf. Autofill Master Wolf. Who else has autofilled in LCK? Goodness. I believe it may have happened once before. I think once before I remember uh, an off roll. I don't remember the specific example. If it does, I'll you know who it was? mention the stream. It was Comeback. That's right. Well... That was kind of announced. It was it, it was announced as a jungle sub. I mean, he was listed as a support. Then he was listed as a jungle. And then and then it moved to yes. It did say jungle on the piece that, of paper. I think the first time that he played, I don't think that he was listed as jungle yet. I think he was still listed as support, and then he got swapped in the jungle. Because I remember asking about the you know the rules that you know as long as you have a sub, they can play for you in any role. So I'm pretty sure he was still listed as a support. So Hachani, aka comeback, aka retired. That was actually known to the community, though. They had kind of said publicly that he was training up in the jungle roles, but this is uh, this was from left field a little bit more than that, but good good pull there, Kilios. So. Yeah. Similar situation. What are these supports going to jungle? It's a new thing. It's all about the path thing. Less mechanics, I guess. I, yeah. It's just the natural transition. Looking at the map here. Now he's going to return to bot lane. Teleport is up, but teleport wards around Baron. Not the best. Uh, no deep vision here for SKT on the red side to make Baron easy, and... Losing Baron is one of the few ways this game will be delayed, so I imagine it's going to be the multi-step invade for Vision, then start off the Baron plan for SKT. Oh, well, that's going to be an eruption coming down for the pop-up. Do find it there, but kills have not spilled forward. Wolf nearly going down, but Faker's able to go ahead and finish off Songwon. And you can see, just 
Lava way too far forward, gets absolutely shredded. He's trying to do his damnedest, he's tanky with his horn, but there's just so much damage out from Bang, who's just racking up kill after kill, triple kill, going through for him. Linderong, the last remaining members of the Rock, remaining member of the Rock's Tigers, is headed for the hills, trying to get back into base to get to the fountain to heal up, but there's really nothing that he can do. Inner turret goes down in mid. SKT now looking for the Baron, just 22 and a half minutes in, 13 to one. It's not a perfect game, but it's so damn close. We think a shot call also to go for the Baron because you consider, well, they could have got the inhibitor turret, right? But they would have had to back. Potentially, there could have been a rush for Baron. But the reason why I really like taking Baron in this particular game is look who you're against, against Jace, Azir, and Varus. So much Lion Wave clear. Yeah. Getting the Baron buff negates that. You already know you have the potential to die. The Baron is the better objective than the inhibitor turret. That is not always the case, but definitely in this situation, gets them a big win. Well, very solid here from SKT. Massive turnaround from that game two where they were just floundering, didn't really know what to do after the camping top. But I mean, you know, Rocks, they try to go for the engagement, but it's just not enough. I mean, Wolf leads with his face. You do that on Alistair, you do that on Szechuan. He does that and there's just so much extra gold that the damage from Rocks doesn't register in anywhere near the same way as it does from SK Telecom T1. Skippy's the back line, Sun Yun's all alone because everyone else is dead. From there, as you say, triple kill for Bang, a Baron buff, and now one team fight away from SKT icing the game. 7 0 and 3, Bang there on that Sivir. He is, uh, he's pretty good as it turns out. He's got the Static Shiv, Infinity Edge, and that Essence Reaver all ready to go on top of the Berserk of Greaves. It's just a hell of a lot of damage compared to Song Yoon, who is uh, struggling with just the two and a half items, really, that he's got going for himself. We still have two-thirds full crowd at midnight, 15 past minutes, 12.15 a.m. in Korea. On, on a weekday. The, yeah. There's another match day today, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I'm not casting that one, so... Wait, am I on that one? Yes, you are. All oh, right, You're on, on all of them. them. Oh. Well, I'm coming back to the studio real soon, Achilles. See you back here in about 14 hours. Baker's going to take top turret. After stay is five here. The Rocks Tigers, no ability to split the map. Not quite the base broken just yet, but it feels like we're just moments away. The full court press was in a couple of times tonight. And the full display from SK Telecom. T1 is, Adam all right. Coming down there on the bang. Looking for the knockup, but they do not find it. But they will be able to find that kill now. Wolf landed the ultimate this time around. Does go in, takes down Song One. Massive Emperor's Divide coming through, trying to knock him back. The damage is just overwhelming from the side of SKT, even without the Sivir in the mix. Faker goes forward, finds Linderoth. Hey, Wolf got a kill. Just about to be the ace right there as Wolf does get a kill. Congratulations, Wolf. Welcome to the jungle. Hope we see more of you, because honestly, You'll have fun it's and games. damn entertaining. SKT pushing forward. Good little. <laughs> took me a, you know, way too long to get that, but it's been a long day, Papa. Two inhibitors going to go down and likely just the end of the game right here, perhaps. It's going to be the end. Well, we'll see. They don't have a Sivir. And the respawns are coming through. Song Wan's up. Song Hyun okay, coming maybe up not. soon. So, yeah, maybe this will be a slight little delay. Let's keep it going. 12.30, baby. The Woo! dream. Let's make it all the way to 1 a.m. I think uh, I forget what the longest we've been here until was. We've, I've told that anecdote so many times. So now it's 12.30. Yeah, 12.30, I do believe. I mean, we're going to be here to 12.30. We've still got an interview after that this. That was during years. the great blizzard of 2016. <laughs> 2017. Well... We're going to have an interview after this, so we're staying late, Achilles, going to the wee hours, bringing you guys League of Legends action. It's been just the most insane day. It really I hope, has. I hope someone goes back and watches the entire VOD from the start. It's including been something. the podcast? Yes, including the podcast. We should really start releasing those as separate audio files. <laughs> Our LCK podcast, which was a solid seven hours ago. What should we title it? Wolf in the jungle. They won't know what it means. Okay. Oh boy. SK Telecom T1. Looking great, great form. Just looking to ice the game. Items overload on everyone. And uh, yep, everyone on welfare on the side of Rocks Tigers. No one's got any gold. Two kills across the team there. One of them's on key. And look how respectable Wolf's kills look now. 2 1 and 8. <laughs> Look at his CS lead over Song Song Wan. Beautiful, 45, 35. 
Well, the Azir Tower, it's all they have to show in the mid lane. Now it's going to go down over time. And full core press we talked about continues. Oh, going for another play here on the bank. Looking for the pop up. He sidesteps it beautifully within the Cataclysm. Trying to push forward, but instead is just taking hit after hit from that Sivir. Top close to the transformation. And he get oh it. Megan on the be a juicy ultimate. He's going to go forward looking for the Impetus Divide. Does cut him off, so not really going to be able to get the completion there that he would have liked. Could have been a massive ultimate. As Wolf goes ahead and picks up yet another kill this time, finishing off key. Faker goes forward, charging face first up towards that fountain. Does take out the Verisong. It goes down, and the next resorts are going to crumble. This one, game three, considerably faster than the rest. 28 minutes on the clock. SKT with Wolf in the jungle. Take them down. And that is going to be a victory for them. Certainly a bit more hard fought than SKT was expecting here at the beginning of the season versus the likes of the Rocks Tigers. But they look good in game two, but uh, what can you say? Wolf in the jungle here in game three. Is there nothing that this man can do? We'll start with Rocks Tigers Can't and say... Do. Nothing is... Yeah. It's a, it's a long day. Long day. We'll start with the Rocks Tigers and say, what was their pre-match goal? Look competitive. What did they do? Certainly look competitive. Sure, in game one and game three, eventually they were taken out and sung you with a bit of a wry grin. I'm sure he won't be interviewed after this one, but he'll be having some choice words about the series. Rocks Tigers did not get completely blown over by SKT. The game two victory was triumphant, but Wolf in the jungle was a success. Is it a once-off thing against Rocks Tigers? Is it something that you always have to respect now? If effort is the starting support, maybe you do have a flex substitute who can play either support or jungle as the team needs. Such a weird timeline that we're living in right here, but you know, I'd be lying to you if I said that I didn't like it. Absolutely incredible, Wolf. And we'll finish that one out. Multiple kills, only the one death where he just got a bit too crazy going in for that Azir. Gives up the first blood, but doesn't even matter. The rest of the team is there to pick up the slack, and he himself went into overdrive. And they just absolutely crushed Rock Tigers there in game three. So I believe that actually gives us, gives us a 100% blue side win rate here today, Bob Smith. Yes, you're right. It did go blue side. That's interesting. I have to really go back and crunch the numbers once we have at least a full match day for every team being played and work out what's good and what leaves us something to be desired. No Nidalee today. That was uh, not the pick of the day. And Karsix, you'd have to say, has been a pretty big fail apart from game two of this series as well so far yeah. in the LCK. But we're still learning about what's good and what still needs to be developed. The Rocks Tigers. They won't feel great. Game two is something that you can't take away. They were not 2 0 by SK Telecom T1. And then for SKT, you think, all right, kind of everything you worried about and also were excited about happened. What about Bang? He came out and hard carried game one. Great feels for Bang. What about Untara? Looks solid in two games and then just got smashed in one game. Still some worries there about how top lane will look. So. It still feels like the dart board has kind of darts in every area, and we still don't have a full picture of SK Telecom after one match day. Curious to see how many kills Faker got here today. Get closer to that 1,500 mark. He is very close to that. 1,444, I do believe, at the start of the day. Can tell you he didn't get 50, uh, 56 kills. Yes, <laughs> that is correct. You know, I kind of figured on that one, Papa Smithy, but thank you for keeping uh, the math. That's why they keep me around. I'm there's, the math god. There's been some math struggles here tonight, so it's good that we got that one figured out, just to be sure. But, man, I mean, what a first day here for LCK at OGN. Everything happens. Going to the full six games on the day, taking about as long as humanly possible. And you guys got the special edition podcast at the start for about an hour. This was definitely the most LCK in every good way. Are you not entertained? You got a podcast, you got six games, all of which interesting new picks, roll swaps, Bengi's there talking to Wolf, being like, ha, huh, I told you. <laughs> Jungling for SKT's all right. Taught him everything that I know. Camp for Faker. Yep. Well, Bengi came back and he just said, oh, great, you know what? Blank has to be the sub again now. Yeah. But I'm not playing, so Wolf, you got to do something. But there you go. I mean, the damage coming through from the Azir there at the end, still pretty significant, but just wasn't enough. Bang at the end. I mean, he was just ripping people apart left and right. So we're just giving the MVP to the narrative MVP. Surely it's just going to be Wolf. We need to ask him I questions. Th I think it really has to be. We have to hear from this man. 
Sometimes gameplay is secondary to autofill in LCK. Come on. Don't be so upset. There, there we it go. Is. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have an interview with Wolf 3, 1, and 9 on the day. Out of the jungle for the first time in his competitive career with a 57% kill participation rate. Let's take a look at some highlights. I mean, Wolf was seeing sights he's never seen before. I mean, every nook and cranny of the jungle finds places. Going for a walk. No ultimate. longer shackled to his mate. Although he was very close to Bang now. It's kind of uh, lore appropriate. This was the part where rocks all end on the Alistair at ultimate. And that was from This was 100%. Another great. one. Oh, that was a bad time. Sung in the golden. Game two. Not so much. Game three. And yeah, crazy game. Insane to have Wolf have the flexibility start playing in a solo queue. They prefer effort in the jungle over Blossom playing, which, I mean, effort in the support role and Wolf flexing to the jungle over Blossom playing, which given his lack of experience in the game three, it makes a lot of sense. The end result is something no one could have predicted though. Cool stuff, really, really cool match day and well-deserved victory to Wolf. Again, flexing like this, the highest level of competition has to be a board. Especially when just went really nobody anticipated it. He caught everybody off guard. It's just one of the weirdest things to see. And to have it be successful, I mean, that really is something that's going to be playing in the back of every team's mind when they come and play against SK Telecom. Especially if Are they going to have Wolf in the jungle? Especially if Effort can solidify himself as starter, right? He was yeah. kind of a little bit up and down, but decent first outing for him. If he can continue to develop, then you really do have a flex sub. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, absolutely nuts. But, uh, I mean, it's time to go ahead and throw over to our interview. So it's going to be our our former bot lane in Bang & Wolf, but with different roles this time around. Excited to hear what Wolf has to say about his first jungle appearance. So let's go ahead and throw over to Joel for the translation. Joel, take it away. Thank you very much, guys. This is Joel once again uh, for the very last time of day one of OGN's LCK. I'm going to have SKTs. Very happy uh, for many reasons. Uh, two MVPs of this series. We're going to have Bang and also Wolf from the jungle. Seems more like an introduction of the SKT bot lane, but it's definitely a different story this time around. How do you feel about the win? I think today, I, I, I don't know if it came out to the the level that we had prepared, but but it's the first game of the season, so getting a win, no matter how we, no matter, it doesn't really matter how we did it. And with all the the rookie players that had to be involved in today's games, uh, it felt really good today. And what was the behind story into today's demolition of you playing jungle today? Yeah, I mean, when I was playing, um, when I was playing solo queue uh, with uh, with our jungle teammates, uh, I had a pretty good win rate playing on that position, uh, just playing solo queue. So I felt like it might have transferred uh, that success over to the actual competitive league. So I felt like I was surprised, that, you know, of how well I did, and feel like I can continue on with this, and maybe if I keep practicing, I can just keep this a staple for me. It's not really because I couldn't play support, but it's because I can play both positions well, and I think that's the reason why I play jungle today. And it felt like uh, when you were sitting down at that different chair, you seemed a lot more confident than what we'd expected you to. But let's go on and take this a little more seriously. What do you want to give Wolf's jungling uh, if you can score that uh, based on his performance? I think if I um, came in from the very first game, I wouldn't have made that mistake in the early game uh, when I dove in uh, with the Sejuani. Uh, it will show it in the replay here, but... Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's an instinctual play. I mean, he went on and he had pretty low HP, so like, oh, I had to flash him with him, so... I guess I wasn't really aware of all the other teammates that his uh, that his allies could have come for his counter. No, if it was our support that came right there, I mean, I wouldn't have died, and Azir probably would have died. 
And there is going to be an off the record, I'm sure, uh, for a lot of these discussions held here. So you guys can check for yourselves on um, what the truth uh, beholds once that is released. Yeah, I'm sure that was a situation where we could have greeted and used all of our flashes just to help out Wolf and that Sejuani over there, but... But I think I would give 8.5, maybe out of 10. Uh, pretty good? <laughs> Not bad. For me, as a rookie jungler, I felt like it was a solid performance in the jungle. And of course, uh, your team is experiencing a lot of different changes within the organization, but how has been that change affecting your team as a whole? I mean, it's just good overall. I don't know if the fan base may have any misunderstanding about, you know, our current uh, team morale, but, you know, despite the maybe the little bit disappointing performance that we had uh, in the past, I think we're doing all right. And you did uh, pick out Israel for game one and ended up putting a lot of damage to lead your team to victory. I'm sure we have a replay showing an example of that. And it was a very daring situation for you for your team. And right at this point, did you kind of expect oh, all the things were going to go the right way? Was there any mistakes uh, in that specific play? I mean, he's just really looking at his highlight right now and just immersed in it. You know, at that situation when Tom Kent um, uh, took his champion, uh, took his ally and uh, died with it, I think that was a big mistake by that support, but... And we saw a situation where he suddenly uh, flanked from the side and to kill off Azir. And it was a situation where the three of their opponents uh, were heading towards mid lane. And it was a situation where I had a good angle up on him. And it was something that we want to take our chances upon. And, and from our second uh, other teammates that were hiding in that left uh, side of the bush, uh, it was a good position for us to flank him all together. And, and I think it was a situation where Zir had to come to that position. It was a very, uh, very much a bait for him to take. <laughs> and going on to game three, you did pick out the Sivir to get the win there again. Oh, I think one of the situations you're talking about where I got the blind shot, that was complete luck. You know, I feel like someone might be there, but you're never sure, so you just... I just throw, out, throw it out there and hopefully it gets it, and I was pretty surprised when I got the kill there. Did you have any vision? No, I didn't have any vision. It was just literal instinct of, of me feeling like if I throw a Q right at that time, maybe I'll get it. It was a more of a kind of a rushed moment where we just had to rush over there and hopefully steal it in some way or the another. And I told the Alistar to go and ward it, but no, it wasn't it wasn't in time enough, so I had to go in there and go for the hail mary there. I mean, now you have a hard decision, Wolf. Are you gonna stay in the jungle or are you gonna go back to your old forward support? What kind of a jungle would you like to be? What kind of a jungler would you like to be? <laughs> I want to sort of absorb uh, the strengths of many different junglers around the league. And I think the my jungler uh, fanatic just really came from learning from Bangi. And I think if Bengi didn't have come to our team to join as the coach, um, I don't think I would have um, had the bravery to go in in that position and do what I did today. 
And they're highlighting upon Cloud Templary. He's, I think he's feeling a little bit mad that he's not the role model for Wolf's jungling here. Maybe a full play move. But you know, regarding Bangi uh, and I, when we do discuss possible jungling roads, and, but he always tells me that the, the pathing is not really so important. You just need to dominate the other jungler and just get them out of the game. And that's really the most important part that he told me about. And of course, uh, you did uh, make your successful debut uh, essentially by playing your first game of jungle. And it wasn't an easy game for you guys to pick out the win against Rox Tigers. And of course, you did pick out a win. And a win is a win, of course, but did have a little disappointing uh, hiccup uh, during that middle of the series. So, would you like to say anything uh, for the very last words? I think right now, for me personally, yeah, I want to be in a situation where we can have a good uh, ending to our story for this season and really want to make it to MSI as much as all possible. You know, the, the three uh, League of Legends World Championship victory didn't come through for us, but uh, something we can still achieve uh, at this moment is the MSI, and I really want to uh, get that for our team. And I think it's a very important year for all of us, uh, for as an organization, to prove ourselves and prove to others that we're still a strong team. Wolf, any last words you have uh, to add on to what you, Bang just said? Anything to the fans? And, uh, the games ended quite late today, and I know that public transportation is pretty much cut off uh, at this moment, so we always do thank you for that much uh, that you guys are so passionate on cheering for us and supporting us. And of course, um, people back home uh, who are watching this on screen, uh, we still thank you for it. And we do have a lot of matches still left uh, in this season. We just at continue to ask for your support. We thank you all. And that does uh, seem like the end of the interview for day one of OGN's LCK. We're going to throw it back to you guys. Thank you very much, Joel, for the translation as always. Well, there you go, Wolf. Maybe we'll see more of this moving forward. Flex Maybe we'll see him come out and uh, play, you know, at least one time in every single role on the side of SKT, except for mid, because Faker will never surrender his position again. That's fair, that's fair, but I just want to see how OGN's going to listen. We actually get sheets that say their role, and suddenly yeah. I need to add a dash and give both jungle and support. Great, great series, great day's games also, but uh, great series between SKT and Rox. Game two is the one Rox can look back on very fondly. Great yeah. game played by Songwon and Lin Durang. What a crazy series. Damn it! Wolf went from the went to the jungle and helped win in an LCK game. I know. And it's guess nuts, what? Man. It's been a crazy day. Pops. It's not that many hours till the next series. Less than 17 hours. 16 and a half hours from now. In fact, my call time is less than 14 hours from now. Yeah. new Monster, BBQ Olivers, and BBQ make their first debut. So lovers of Ignar and Trick from EU LCS will be coming and making their big debut in the final team to make their debut in the LCK is Jinnia Greenwing. So Wraith and Teddy will yep. show us all their might against the might of KSV, who looked very strong yesterday. I get a bit of a reprieve for tomorrow. I don't have to be back here. It's going to be Atlas joining Papa Smithy here on the desk. But I will be back on Saturday to bring you guys KT Rolster versus MVP. Again, we're talking about this with KT Rolster with that loss. Score not looking great and MVP looking like potentially the weakest team in the league. Will we see Rush play? That's going to be the big question going into Saturday. Can't wait to find out if that's going to be the case. And then uh, Jenner Green Wings versus SKT. Always an interesting series. Jenner has pulled out those very surprising victories over SK Telecom in the past. I think he could do it again now with this different roster without Kuzan. It would be very interesting to see. So both those games are going to have uh, a lot of intrigue surrounding them. Not the time for the what ifs. Now the time for thank yous. Thank you for watching for seven hours and 40 minutes yeah. if you stuck around for all. If you're just tuning in, it was a crazy night. Watch the VODs. My really goodness. was. But all right, these guys will be back. Him and Atlas will be back tomorrow for more LCK action. I'll see you guys on Saturday. Have a good one, and thank you for staying with us the entire time. You're the end of